All right, so here we are, uh, ambient occlusion tutorial. Um, I'm going to try to keep this to 7 to 12 minutes, just like my previous tutorial. Um, short and sweet, quick to the point, and um, get a good result out of this, hopefully. Um, so what I have up here right now in Photoshop is basically just the beauty pass of a simple scene that I set up for applying the ambient occlusion. So uh, what we're going to do is actually... Um, go into Maya, create the ambient occlusion, and then actually apply it in Photoshop after so you can see how it works. Um, and then the technique that you learn for applying it in Photoshop will go with After Effects or any other um, compositing application like that. So here's uh, my basic setup. So what we're going to do is actually jump into Maya and knock this out. So um, here's my scene, and I'm just going to go to View, and I'm going to click on those bookmarks just to bring up my shot. So uh, I might uh, do another tutorial later on cameras and setting up shots and things like that. But we'll do that at another time. Uh, for now, what we want to do is, is we want to select all the geometry in the scene and apply the ambient occlusion material on everything. Now, um, how I do that is I just select one item. And once one of the pieces of geometry is selected, I can go up to Edit in the menu bar at the top, come down to Select All by Type, and with Select All by Type selected, I can come over and choose Geometry. Now, once I have everything selected, I need to put this onto a render layer um, because I don't want to mess up my current materials that I have. I want to create an ambient occlusion material on top of those. So you can create layers just for rendering and have a different set of render layers for everything. So I could have a specular render, I can have my ambient occlusion, and I can have my beauty render layer, and I can just choose which one from each that I want to render out. And in order for us to do that, we need to be in on the right hand side under the channel box. So right now I'm in the attribute editor. So to get in the channel box, I can do one of two things. I can click this little tab on the right side that says channel box, or I can hit control A on the keyboard and it'll flip me back over to my channel box. So once I'm into the channel box, uh, I have my layers palette down here at the bottom. And there is three layer palettes. There's display, render, and animation. Um, the one that we want is render, so we're going to click on render. And because I have all the geometry in the scene selected, I will be able to click on this last little button that says add, create new layer, um, and assign selected objects. So it's going to create a brand new render layer and assign all the selected objects. Um, and now you can see we have a layer 2 that actually doesn't change when we click between our master beauty to our layer 2. Um, but the layer 2 is where we are going to apply the ambient occlusion. Um, you can also double click on the layer and name it whatever you want. I'm going to leave it called layer 2 for now. Um, and then we are going to jump back into our attribute editor. So I'm going to hit control A again to take me into the attribute editor. And in our list of tabs in the attribute editor, we have a brand new layer two tab, which should show up right away in the beginning. You should be able to see it there. Um, click on layer two. And when layer two is selected, there is a presets option. And when you click on presets, there is a preset that says occlusion. When I click the occlusion button from the drop down, everything on my screen will turn black with a black material. Um, that black material is now our um, black surface shader, which is actually our occlusion surface shader. Uh, now, one other thing to mention while we're here before we actually do any of the rendering out of it, um, the ambient occlusion actually doesn't require any global illumination, um, HDR maps, anything like that. So if you're using any HDR map lighting, uh, um, indirect lighting, anything like that, it's actually going to just make the render take longer for no reason so what you can do is you can come up to your render settings leave your common settings and everything normal but under the indirect lighting go through and turn off all of the settings like uh, it's taking a little while to load um, undo all the settings like the global illumination final gather those types of things because those don't need to be present for the scene um, 
And then what we're going to do is over here in our attribute editor, we have a surface shader option and we have a Maya ambient occlusion tab. We want to choose the ambient occlusion tab. The ambient occlusion tab is going to bring up all the settings that we need for setting up the, the occlusion map. So we have samples, which is going to um, improve the quality of the ambient occlusion. So um, basically what we're going to be doing, doing is picking up the shadows from the scene and the higher the samples, the longer the render time, but the cleaner the shadows are going to be from it. Um, we have our bright and our dark. So how it works in compositing is anything white disappears, anything dark is shown. So we want to leave white and black there. So when we apply it in Maya, it knows to make anything white transparent. And as it gets gray, it becomes more um, it becomes more opaque, and you can't see through it until we get the full dark black shadow. Um, spread is going to be how much spread there is from the shadow. So the less spread there is, the tighter it's going to be. With the less um, fall off or whatever from the shadow, the higher the spread, the more it's going to cover the object and be a, a faded um, shadow. And then the max distance is how much distance is on is on the um, the occlusion. So if I was to render it right now with a distance of zero, I would actually just get a pure white render from it, which is not desirable for what we're trying to do, right? We want to actually see objects in the scene. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to make my max distance two for this shot. And I'm just going to render it with the low samples and uh, the spread at default so that you can see um, what it ends up looking like. So let's go ahead and render this out. Okay, and it looks like we have a successful ambient occlusion, which is pretty nice. This is exactly what I'm going for. The problem is, however, we have some weird kind of like, see, artifacting here. Um, the quality is just not that great with it. Um, and the spread might be a little too much. It might be a too, le too less. This is all going to depend on you and what you're deciding to get out of your scene. But I know for me, at least for this, I really need to clean up the, the little bit of um, artifacting that's happening with my shadows on the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to improve the samples to 32. And also, I'm going to make my spread at 0.9. And I'm going to leave my max distance at 2. And I'm going to go ahead and re-render this. And what we'll do is we'll be able to compare the two renders and see what it looks like. Um, I may even want to bring my samples up to um, 64. We'll have to see. It's already looking better as I see it rendering out. It's looking much cleaner. Um, I'm seeing way less artifacting going on and everything's just looking much, much, much better. So let's take a look at, so it took 21 seconds to render. The previous one took 18. So upping the samples did increase render time a little bit, but it's not bad. So this is what, let me zoom in a little bit. So this is what the previous one looked like. We can see that little bit of artifacting that's happening. And then this is what it changed to. So it got cleaned up a little bit and my spread spread out a little bit more, so I got a little bit more uh, bleeding with the, with the crossover of the shadows. So I'm actually liking that a little better, but I'm gonna bump up the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump up the samples a little bit more. I'm gonna make them 64, just so we can see what the quality difference is. And then I'm also gonna bring up the max distance to 2.3 and see what this does for us. And I'm gonna save this one again and render it. So this is, obviously we bumped up the samples again, so render time's gonna increase. We're probably gonna be closer to um, 30 seconds now for the render, um, but we can already see a much, much better, uh, cleaner shadow, which is probably where I'm gonna leave it now. I'm really liking the way this is turning out and um, that little bit of extra distance is getting me a little bit blacker and darker in the corners and the edges, 
where everything's meeting, so I'm really liking that. So let's see what we got. So this is the newest, it's the previous, so it's definitely just a little bit darker, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And it's come a long way from this, so a little better, a little better. So this is probably good for me. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see that. So it's much smoother in here, even compared to the last one. See, it's still got a little bit of that artifacting and fuzziness there. And then this one was really artifacty and fuzzy. So it took a couple of steps. You got to play with this. And then eventually you'll get to exactly what you're looking at for it. Oh, look at my one uh, cylinder is floating a little bit. That's funny. Um, okay, so now that I got this, and it did take 34 seconds to render that time. So I was pretty close to what I thought it would be. So more complex you're seeing is the longer this is going to take to render when you add more samples. So... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this out. We'll go into Photoshop and apply it. So let's go to File in the Render menu. Go to Save Image. Um, I'm going to go into my Tutorials folder. And here it is right here. And I'm just going to call this the Occlusion Map. And I'm going to save it in this folder. It's going to be saved out. And we're going to jump into Photoshop. And I'm also going to go to where the location of my occlusion is. And I'm going to drop that occlusion right onto my Photoshop picture, which applies it right here. So now what I can do is just adjust it a little bit so that I make sure it's fitting exactly the way I want it to. So let's make sure, I think it's going to be good exactly the way it is. Okay, and then I'm going to hit return. That saves it and I can see it's falling directly on top of it, which is perfect. And um, when you drop in an image like this, what I like to do just so that if I want to do any type of editing to it, is if you right click on the occlusion layer that popped in, um, there is a rasterize layer option, which will just rasterize this so that um, I can perform any edits to it that I want. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, is actually apply the layer mode that we need for the occlusion to work. Um, that's going to be under where it says normal here, because what we want to have happen is the white to disappear and the black and the grays to stay. So we go to normal and click on multiply, which will provide that effect. And it drops the occlusion on. And now if I turn the eye off on occlusion, you can see the difference. So look at the, the difference in right here with, with the wall and turn it back on. Much better with the occlusion coming on here. Turn it off again, turn it back on. Much, much better, much more realistic in the lighting. Now, um, for the most part, you don't always have to have 100% opacity on the occlusion map. I like to keep it around 80% usually. So let me drop that down to like 80. Um, and it all depends on the scene too. So 80% seems to work pretty good for me. So, and now you can create more layers and do color correction, everything else you want to do. But now you got a much, much better shadow system going on with your ambient occlusion and uh, with the ambient occlusion there, and you get a little bit more um, higher quality renders out of it, a little more natural. Um, so that's the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Um, there'll be more tutorials to come. I'm gonna be doing a lot more now. Um, got a brand new mic set up for my computer, so we should be able to do a lot more of these. So if you'd like, subscribe, and um, I look forward to doing a few more tutorials for you guys.